Hello and welcome to part seven of this 10 part series on cage chords and arpeggios. If you haven't seen the other videos yet, click on the card above and that will take you to this short playlist. So in this week's video, we're gonna be looking at how to link together minor chords and arpeggios, minor seventh chords and arpeggios, the minor pentatonic and the minor scale. So it's a nice progression in terms of adding notes each time and it helps you to understand them all and how they all connect together uh, and all the intervals and etc. It's a really good practice tool. So what we're gonna do, we're going to do it in the key of C-sharp minor. Okay, so we're going to look at C-sharp minor chord, C-sharp minor seventh, the C-sharp minor pentatonic, and the C-sharp natural minor scale. So in terms of intervals, this is what you want to do first before even attempting to learn the shapes, just to check you know the notes that you're playing, okay, and understanding it. So a minor chord is built up of a root note, a minor third interval, which is one and a half tones, and perfect fifth interval, which is three and a half tones. So you take a look at C-sharp minor, just do it on the fretboard. C sharp one and a half tones or three frets will take you to E. So the minor third or flat third as it's often abbreviated to is an E. And they've got another two tones to make it a total of three and a half tones, which is the G sharp, okay? So our minor triad is C sharp, E, and then G sharp, okay? So when we go into the minor seventh um, chords, what we're doing is we're adding a minor seventh interval, which is five tones in size. Uh, a quick way of working this out, if we're doing it in C sharp, is go back a tone from the root note, okay? Which is C sharp, C, B, or two frets. Obviously it'll be a higher pitched uh, one, okay? So our C sharp minor seventh, our chords and arpeggios, we'll have a C sharp, an E, and then uh, a G sharp, and then a B. Cool. With a minor pentatonic, again five notes here, what you're doing is adding the perfect fourth interval, okay? So this will be two and a half tones in size. With the C sharp minor pentatonic, you've got the C sharp, the E, and then the F sharp, which is your perfect fourth interval. And then the, C uh, the G sharp, which is your fifth, and then flat and seventh, which is the B. Okay, so it's good to just sort of see the progression here. We're starting with three notes, then four notes, then five notes, then seven notes. And then for the natural minor scale, with that, what we're doing is adding a major second interval and a minor sixth interval to complete that minor scale. So seven notes. So all the notes of the uh, pentatonic plus two extra notes. Okay, so C sharp, natural minor scale, C sharp, then D sharp, which is the major second, then your E, your minor third. F sharp, perfect fourth, uh, G sharp, perfect fifth, A, the minor sixth interval, and then the uh, B note, the minor seventh. Of course, that's just a brief explanation of the intervals there. So it's good, to, worth it, sort of, you know, when you're practicing to completely understand this. So let's take a look at the minor arpeggios and chords first, okay? So again, the idea is to link all this with the cage system and the cage chords. So C sharp minor. C shape, that's a big stretch, that one. And then you've got your arpeggio. Okay, cool. And then you've got the A shape. Okay, so just three notes here. G shape. Just doing C sharp minor chords, the and then we've got E shape. Okay, and now we've got the uh, the D shape. Again, people to practice the chord first, then the arpeggio, and then finish on the chords. That reinforces where all the root notes are as well. And don't forget all the diagrams I'm showing you here. So the green dots. Uh, where the chords lie and obviously the numbers that tell you what fingers to use and any notes with an R there means they're the root note as well. So very useful for soloing, creating riffs and just mapping out the neck. Cool, so then we're going to take the same five shapes, chord shapes, or actually no we're not, we're going to do the minor sevenths now. So we've got minor sevenths chords and arpeggio. So same position, we're now going to do the C shape. Okay, okay, so this is now going to be C shape minor seventh arpeggio, and we're just adding that B note in several two or three positions. Okay, and then 
now we'll do the A shape. So it looks very similar to pentatonic, but minus that perfect fourth interval. So it's good to kind of understand the difference. Okay, so that's C sharp minus seven A shape. And now we're gonna do the G shape. fingers I'm using here and obviously be nice and consistent with that and now we're doing the E shape so each time we're doing these shapes think of them you know, think of them as a pentatonic without this F, perfect fourth interval the F sharp and now we've got the D shape again missing out those F sharps Cool, so there are minor seventh arpeggios and chords. Okay, don't forget any of these um, diagrams, you'll be able to get these, um, download them from the website, jsmusicscore.co.uk. So for this week's lesson, you'll have four PDFs, minor chords and arpeggios, minor seventh chords and arpeggios, minor pentatonic and the natural minor scale. So just head over to the jsmusicscore.co.uk website and go on the JS Music School um, and just click on the relevant category. So this video series. Cool, so that's the minus seventh arpeggios and chords. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna do the add the extra note, and now we've got the minor pentatonic. So kind of just, and again, what you could do is just do, say for example, the C shape, do the C shape minor arpeggios, and C sharp minor seventh arpeggios chords, and then do the pentatonic, and just do one shape at a time. So that's another way of kind of practicing it really well. So now what we're doing, the C sharp minor pentatonic. Okay, with any key you're doing, in order to work out what your first shape is, you just simply find that if you're doing C sharp minor, you've got to find the first C sharp minor chord on the neck, and that will sort of determine which shape you start with. Okay, so this one, C sharp minor pentatonic, you'll be starting with a third shape because that's assigned to this um, C sharp minor seven C shape. Okay, so it means you can just jump anywhere around the neck. If you're in the key of A, right, minor. It means you can just really not just start from the first shape every time, play all over the neck, more of a holistic kind of approach. So, C sharp minor pentatonic. Again, these diagrams as well come with uh, kind of suggested essential bends there as well. So those red dots are the kind of uh, the full tone bends the most common used okay so if you're struggling to kind of you know you want a nice little map to get you going with your pitch bends this should help quite a lot okay they tend to be the ones commonly used the most any can be bent up to the next note in the scale but these are used a lot more commonly um cool so that's the, the um third shape so that's the c shape minor pentatonic where we're adding that perfect fourth interval the minus seventh so you can see that nice gradual progression there so that's adding the f sharp as well so five note scale now we'll do the a shape again so this is the fourth shape the minor pentatonic and you can just it's always the same so the fifth shape always signs with the g shape so this is now the fifth shape of the c sharp minor pentatonic and now we're doing the first shape the minor pentatonic which goes with the E shape and the alternate picking and now we've got the D shape then also you can keep going up the neck third shape fourth shape even fifth shape So yes, it's a really good way of learning, mapping out the neck, and then a switch between key to key. So that's the minor pentatonic. So now what we're gonna do is gonna be adding two more notes. Uh, these are kind of called another kind of tension notes. Uh, and obviously the main difference between the minor pentatonic is natural and minor. So you don't have any semitone intervals in the minor pentatonic, okay? So it's worth kind of bearing that in mind. Um, so now we're going on to the natural minor scale. And this is an updated file where I've put um, semitone bends in blue and the most commonly used ones <coughs> and then the full tone bends in red. So 
really want to get stuck into your bends, you can map out where all the essential bends are in each shape. So you should find that really useful. Okay, so obviously these are the three note per string patterns, really good for stretching your fingers. They're more, they tend to be more symmetrical than the cane shapes. Um, but obviously there's only five letters in the word cage, C-A-G-E-D. So two of the shapes have, um, you've basically got two A shapes here and two E shapes. So I'll explain that in a minute. So yes, yeah, so what we're gonna do, I would, you, can, you can assign minor chords or minor seventh chords here. I, I prefer to assign minor chords because you practice your minor pentatonic with a minor seventh. So, so minor chords, okay. Okay, so this is the C shape. Again, look at the, the, the pictures there. You've got the root notes here and here, in C sharp, and, and see where you start the scale in relation to the root notes. So here, we're actually gonna do the third shape of the minor scale, which looks exactly the same, or well, it is exactly the same as the first shape of the major scale. Now, you don't really need to use exact fingers for the starting of the shape because obviously you don't need that stretch, if that makes sense. So um, people often neglect this part of the neck, especially because the, the shapes look a bit funny, but with the open strings, it's really worth practicing. So our first available shape on the neck, C sharp minor, is because we found our first C sharp root notes. That's the C shape, play the chord, and then you, you're ready to go. It takes a bit of time to sink in, but persevere. And obviously, the last week's video, we were doing the same thing, but with major chords and arpeggios, the major pentatonic, and then the major scale. So it's good to practice your relative major and minor. So if you understand that, so C sharp minor is also the, contains the same notes and chords as E major. This would actually be the first shape of the E major scale. So it's worth kind of, you can practice lots of different ways of syncing combining your theory and, and making it more practical. So now what we'll do is first of our A shapes, shapes four and five go along with the A shape. So here, and look at the root notes, doing C sharp minor, our root notes are here and here, and our scale starts on the two frets below where the root note is, okay? practice all the bends. You've got those, those blue dots there, which are only semitone. So it'll give you a nice, especially if you're, if you're practicing all the same bends, try a few of these out. Uh, so it'll be really useful for your improvising, mapping out the net. So now we've got our second A shape. So we still use the same chord here for two of the shapes. One of them goes back two frets. One of them is going to start directly below the root note. So this is minor scale shape five, A shape, okay? So then root notes there, there and there now, okay? So this is normally the third shape of the major scale, but fifth shape of the minor scale. And being really aware of all those root notes will really help you with the improvising. Okay, so that's the fifth shape. And now what we're gonna do is the G shape. So again, C sharp minor in the G shape. Not a very practical chord. You can only play four strings there, but great for mapping out the neck. So here, we're gonna, that's your root notes to so see where you start the scale in relation to the chord. the chord. Again, you know where all the root notes are. Uh, this one jumps around quite a lot, probably the least symmetrical shape of all seven, because it, but it covers a nice part of the neck as well. Okay, so that's the G shape. Now we're going to start with our, our first of our E shapes. This is now shape seven of the minor scale. Very common shape, this one. Um, kind of also overlays the first shape. 
of the minor pentatonic. So it's very common um, a shape here. So that's our C sharp minor. That's our root note in this particular shape. We start two frets below our, our root note here, and this is the seventh shape. It's the fifth shape of the, the major scale, the seventh shape of the mi minor scale. And then we're actually starting with the first shape, okay? So we actually um, we started off with our third shape, then we did our fourth and fifth, then we did our sixth, and then we did our, now we're doing our seventh, um, we did our seventh, and now we're in our first shape, okay? And being aware of all the root notes, really good for, for your phrasing, etc. Okay, so now we're going to do the, um, the D shape, okay? So we're going to do C sharp minor D shape. And this goes nicely underneath the second shape of the minor scale. Again, um, so it looks like the seventh, normally be the seventh shape of the, um, the major scale. Cool, so then that's all seven shapes. So if you're in a different key, you know, if you were say, I don't know, uh, E flat minor, your first available shape, you've just got to find the first E flat on the neck on the E, the A of the D strings. That's where all your chords start from. So E flat minor, for example, would be that D shape. That'd be the first available. And then you do the C shape, the two A shapes, etc., etc. So hopefully you find that useful. Again, it can take a bit of time, but it can be a nice little practice tool to think, right, okay, minor chords arpeggios, minor seventh, minor pentatonic, minor scale. So you're kind of mixing it all together and being where you can, you know, when you're soloing, you can creating riffs, etc., you can jump between all of these. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up. If you enjoyed it and subscribe and hit that bell icon for notifications if you haven't already and if you need any of these files you'll be able to download all four of these pdfs with all the the bends and the root notes and everything nice and clearly you'll be able to get that as one kind of file one folder uh, from the js music school um website so yeah feel free to check that out and uh, any comments or suggestions feel free to let me know in the comment section below thanks very much for watching see you next time cheers bye